Well, I will say this, and you've probably also heard this, Lyme is the great imitator. Um, it, people with, will be diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease and have Lyme disease, MS, lupus, do they have that and Lyme or just Lyme and it's imitating it? I don't know. I do have a colleague that in the last year develop, has developed Lou Gehrig's disease and he <laughs> doesn't want to hear what I had to say about it. I said, you know, I know it's a long shot, but if I were you, I would get a serious te seriously good test for Lyme disease. I, one thing I didn't mention, this, this doctor that I saw that helped me at first, um, that I'd known for 15 years back in 2012 when I first just got sick and they diagnosed me with fibromyalgia, I told him, I said, I think it's Lyme. I have some pretty decent intuition. And he ran what's called an ELSA test. I think, in hindsight, I know that. He ran what's called an ELSA test and it actually came back equivocal. But he said it was neg he said oh it's negative you don't have Lyme, but neither he nor I knew jack squat <laughs> about Lyme disease and ELSA tests and that it was very ineffective particularly in somebody with chronic Lyme and what should have been done was to prime me with antibiotics and then give me a full Western blot and it takes an LLMD to interpret that because the CDC's scoring is way different from what's really required for a Lyme diagnosis. It's another thing I learned. Um, so what's the doc, doc, doctor in New York who's like really famous wrote the book on multiple symptom diseases and he's kind of one of the leaders in the field. He has this slide that people pass around on the internet called Lyme Bingo. It says if you have one of these bands on your test, you have Lyme disease. You don't have to wait to have all five bands that the CDC counts as Lyme. And interestingly, I mean, there's a very expensive lab out in California that's the best. And they, they found several of the bands. And then this guy in Arizona that tested me more recently found the most incriminating band of all through LabCorp. <laughs> like, well, maybe we should have done a LabCorp test. But that may also have been because I was off antibiotics for four weeks. But if anybody cares, that's band 23. <laughs> so, well, several of the bands that they find overlap, like you can have band 31 and 41, which I do, but you could develop you could have those from other viruses, so if having those alone isn't enough for a diagnosis, but when you start seeing 23 and 39, any one of them, it's Lyme. And this guy says, you know, just don't stop messing around with diagnosing. And the other way to tell is to start treating it and see what happens. If you respond to treatment and your body starts going all wacko, then you probably have it. I'll mention the name of the lab again. It's Igenix in California. They don't take any insurance, but they do take Medicare. So if you have Medicare, that's a, actually a good thing. Um, the first doctor I had who was a bit outdated, trying to be kind here, uh, ordered, when he got my blood drawn, ordered the Igenix. He ordered way more tests than I needed. Like. $2,500 worth of tests. All you need to run initially is an ELSA and a Western blot. <laughs> Just that. But there is a, a, if you think you might have, let, let, it takes a while because it takes a while for the bacteria to get enough into the blood. Like if you've just gotten bitten and you've got the bullseye rash, just treat it. Don't wait around. The, your test isn't going to be positive for a while. And by that time, you've already, you're getting into chronic Lyme. It is possible, if it's treated early, that it can be eradicated from your system. And that's one of the things that's really tough. You know, people, we see this all the time, not all the time, but pretty often on the Lyme group, 
on Facebook. Somebody sends in a picture, my kid has this bullseye rash, the doctor doesn't want to do anything, he says it's an insect bite, <laughs> you know, what do I do? We're like, get your kid to an LLMD, somebody who will give him or her, you know, say, let's, let's give him six weeks of doxycycline, let's just go crazy. <laughs> you know, six weeks is better than 10 years. You know, but, um, so if you've just gotten bitten, just go get treatment. Is it clear what an LLMD is? Uh, it's called, it's a Lyme literate doctor. And it's, and here's part of the problem with it. There's no certification to be a, a, an LLMD. All a person has to do is call themselves an LLMD. So what you wanna look for in a doctor is somebody who is regularly attending um, international conferences on Lyme disease. There's a group called Iliads International Lyme Association, blah, blah, blah. And my doctor goes to that conference every year in addition to other things. If your doctor is not staying current, they shouldn't be treating you because it's the treatments and stuff's changing month by month, day by day at this point. It's got to be somebody that's current. And a non-Lyme doctor is just, so this gentleman that I saw, he was wonderful, he treated me for years, but he didn't know any, he didn't know any more about Lyme than I did. You think doctors know things, well they only know what they know. You can't trust your GP to evaluate this, you just can't. And your life depends on it, can depend on it. I mean, who wants, who wants to give up a highly productive career at the age of 52 where they're only working nine months a year. You know, I'm like, you get to the point where I'm finally, you know, getting the fruits of the, you get a, it's hard work to get a PhD and I could find a job where I earned a lot more money with a PhD than being a professor. But, you know, you finally get to the point where it's great and then, And as I said, you know, then I've, back to the flip side, you know, lots to be grateful for. I'm walking around. I can drive myself here. There's a lot of people that can't do that. And there were, there have been times when I can't, but that doesn't, I'm not in remission by any, any means. Rem, remission is actually better to where you're not noticing Lyme symptoms. If you think you have Lyme disease, if you have any question, find an LLMD and get a test done. One thing I didn't really go into, there is a protocol for priming for the test. If the doctor doesn't know it, it is available through the IGENIX laboratory. You can call and they can send it to, to you or to the doctor. They'll send you a test. They will send you personally a testing kit for free. You could, you could actually, if you're smart enough, <laughs> get the kit, have your general practitioner draw the blood, and you can read the report when it comes back. It's not that hard. Then look for the Lyme bingo thing, email the people in the Utah group, and I'll tell you. Sorry, bad news, or, you know, not seeing anything here, whatever. People will help as much as they can, but in news, anything you get over the internet is as good as any news over the internet. <laughs> Gotta take it with a grain, grain of salt.